This week, SpaceX is planning on launching their interplanetary rocket Starship on its third test flight. It's the largest and most powerful rocket ever built. Bigger than NASA's space launch system, more powerful than the Saturn V rockets that took Apollo astronauts to the moon, even more powerful than the Soviet N1 rocket. If you want to know more about Starship or the particulars of this test mission, you're at the right place. Let's start with what Starship is. Fully stacked, it stands 394 feet or 120 meters high. It's a two-stage launch system with the first stage booster called Super Heavy. The second stage is called Starship and it's designed to carry cargo or passengers or both. The big thing about Starship, the system, not the second stage, is that it can transport huge payloads to space. Currently, SpaceX has their workhorse rocket, the Falcon 9, as well as their heavy lift variant, the Falcon Heavy. The current iteration of the Falcon 9 rocket maxes out with an expendable rocket flying around 50,265 pounds or 22,800 kgs to low Earth orbit. The Falcon Heavy can lift 140,660 pounds or 63,800 kg, while Starship? There's a few numbers out there, but it's safe to say the rocket will be able to handle at least 100 metric tons or 220,462 pounds to orbit. So just a little bit of a difference there. It's important to note that Falcon Heavy is basically just a modified version of the Falcon 9. It's essentially three Falcon 9 boosters strapped together with a reinforced center core. You can think of it as an iteration on SpaceX's flagship rocket, but it's essentially the same technology. They both have Merlin engines. They both use liquid oxygen and rocket-grade kerosene as propellant. Starship is a completely different beast. I'm sure much of the flight software is the same, but the key is that the super heavy booster has 33 Raptor engines that run on methalox or liquid methane and liquid oxygen propellant. It's cleaner burning than other rocket fuels, it's more efficient, it costs less, and the materials are available in other worlds, which means astronauts on Mars could create the fuel locally to return home rather than having to take all their propellant with them. It's considered next-gen rocket propellant in a lot of ways. Starship is also fully reusable. So like the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy boosters, Super Heavy will perform a boost back burn and come back to Earth for a safe landing. Starship, the second stage, also has its own six Methalox Raptor engines that theoretically will be capable of taking it wherever it needs to go. The idea is that Super Heavy is just to get Starship out of the drag of Earth's atmosphere. Then the upper stage can manage on its own into space or come down for a safe controlled landing. That's part of why this is so complicated. SpaceX is basically testing two different spacecraft every time they launch Starship and both are supposed to be fully reusable. With the launch suite like Falcon 9, which is by far the most launched rocket in the world, and the Falcon Heavy, you might wonder why SpaceX needs a third rocket. Well, the entire point of what SpaceX is and has been doing is basically reducing the cost to take cargo to low Earth orbit. If you can get what you need into low Earth orbit, you are halfway to wherever you need to go. The hard part is putting stuff into orbit, especially if you're trying to haul heavy cargo, habitation modules for outposts on other planets, that sort of thing. That's why the International Space Station was constructed in pieces, because it's a lot easier to take up smaller pieces and build things in space than it is to construct something large on Earth and then figure out a way to launch it. The idea is eventually Starship will bring down launch costs enough to where it will replace both the Falcon 9 and the Falcon Heavy. SpaceX has been consistently bringing down launch costs thanks to the reusability of its rockets. Currently, the launch cost of a reusable Falcon 9 is around $67 million. We don't have the precise pricing for an expendable Falcon 9. It can be up to $100 million. Expendable versus reusable is important because expendable can take more cargo to low Earth orbit because it doesn't have to carry the propellant to make a safe landing. We also don't have clear numbers for how much a fully loaded reusable Falcon 9 rocket can manage to low Earth orbit, but it's probably around 18,000 kgs or 39,600 pounds. The reusable space shuttle, which was originally designed to bring down the cost of access to space, 
But in practice, the orbiters were so delicate that they had to fully refit them between every launch, so it ended up being astronomically expensive. The pricing for a space shuttle launch was about $1.5 billion to launch 27,500 kgs to low Earth orbit. If you do the math, it's a difference of about $54,500 per kilogram with the shuttle versus somewhere around $3,700 per kilogram for a Falcon 9. This is also why I don't take it too seriously when people try to compare NASA's SLS rocket and Starship. Yes, Starship and the Space Launch System are both intended to be interplanetary rockets, but SLS will end up costing around $4.1 billion per launch. Like development in any other industry, usually the first launch is extremely expensive, and then once the rocket succeeds, the costs come way down. But SLS will always be expensive. A report from NASA's Office of the Inspector General makes it clear that the production costs will continue to be around $2 billion per rocket. The space launch system is old technology, which comes in contrast to Starship's pushing the envelope. SLS's RS-25 engines for Artemis I were literally ripped out of the space shuttle and reused for SLS. The intention was to keep costs down by using tried and true tech. Future SLS rockets will use a modified RS-25 engine that's new, but according to the OIG report, the cost for four of these engines is over half a billion dollars per rocket, and SLS is not reusable. It's so bad that NASA's Office of the Inspector General actually recommended that NASA look to commercial launch providers to achieve their cost reduction goals for the Artemis program because it will just never happen with SLS. It is too expensive. I am not trying to make this NASA versus SpaceX and dunk on NASA and praise SpaceX. I certainly have my many criticisms of SpaceX, and I don't think it's a secret. I think NASA does a great job at a lot of things. And, to be fair, SLS performed very well during its first flight on Artemis 1, but it is also sickeningly expensive. And I want human space flight and space exploration to become a sustainable and relatively affordable thing. That's one reason I'm so interested in watching Starship. The success of Starship is also crucial to NASA's Artemis program in another way. The Human Landing System, or HLS, is a spacecraft that astronauts will board in orbit of the moon. It will transport them to the lunar surface and then take them back again to lunar orbit when they're ready. HLS is just a modified version of Starship, so NASA will be watching this launch very closely as well. If they want to meet the current goal of September 2026 for Artemis 3, the first crewed moon landing of the Artemis program, then they really need SpaceX to succeed here. Now, let's talk about what to expect on the test flight on Thursday. I've talked quite a bit about the amazing capabilities of Starship, but it's important to note we won't see much of this on Thursday. Assuming they obtain a launch license from the FAA in time, this Thursday's flight is just a test. They're not actually going to do all these things I just talked about, because the main purpose here is just a demonstration of the hardware and the accomplishment of a few test objectives. The launch is currently scheduled for Thursday morning, March 14th. SpaceX will stream it live on their website. The live stream is currently scheduled to begin at 7.30 a.m. Eastern Time, which would be about 30 minutes before when they hope to launch. I will also have a rundown of what happened during the mission later in the day, whenever it launches. It can be hard to cover SpaceX, especially on these test flights, because they guard information very carefully. But here is what we do know about the flight. The aim is to launch from their spaceport in Boca Chica, Texas. In this graphic from SpaceX, you can see the details. After stage separation, which happens about 2 minutes and 44 seconds after liftoff, the Super Heavy booster will flip and perform a boost back burn. That Super Heavy booster is supposed to splash down in the Gulf of Mexico. Meanwhile, the upper stage Starship will continue its ascent. I think it will stay suborbital, so I don't think this will be an orbital flight. During this test, it will attempt to open and close its payload door, perform a propellant transfer demonstration, basically transferring propellant from one tank to another, a preview of on-orbit refueling tech, and interestingly, the first ever relight of a Raptor engine while in space and controlled re-entry of Starship. 
This is super interesting because they're targeting a new splashdown location for Starship. It's not the Pacific Ocean this time, it is the Indian Ocean. That's supposed to happen an hour and four minutes after liftoff. They haven't told us specifically why, but reading between the lines of what we do know, I think it's because if the Raptor engine test goes sideways, then they don't want to hit Hawaii on their way down. But it could be for some other reason. This also means that the weather in the Indian Ocean will likely be a factor in the decision on whether to launch Thursday. There was a lot of talk publicly about the failure of Starship's first two test missions, while every space reporter and analyst I know was marveling at the success. Things blowing up and learning from what goes wrong is a tried and true component of building rockets and spacecraft. But now we're on the third test mission, so let's talk about what I would consider a success for this flight. The second test, which I did think was successful because it improved on the first one, ended soon after the first stage separation. I think they need to demonstrate they can achieve the basics, launch, ascent, stage separation, and the successful splashdown of the booster. The rest, the propellant demonstration, the payload door, that's extra. Notice I didn't mention Starship, the second stage's successful re-entry, because if they succeed at that objective, this will be an incredible success. I think that is going to be the hardest part, the relight of the Raptor engine in space, and then the controlled re-entry. I think that'll be the single biggest point of failure, that part of the mission, because of the stresses involved. But who knows, we will see what happens. And I think that is just about everything you should know about Starship and this upcoming test launch. Thank you for watching. I'm Swapna Krishna, and this is Ad Astra.